Welcome to the Five Heart Podcast. This is John Johnston, founder of coordination.com. I'm joined by Todd Wolverton, another extremely tired old man. How are you doing tonight, Todd? I'm a tired old man. Yeah. So you fit the description well. Yeah. You know, um, that's probably, you know, should be the bumper sticker for me this week is tired old man. Why is that, Todd? Why? Oh, been on the road a lot this week. A lot of late nights. Been going to College World Series since uh, last Monday. Um, and, uh, you know, getting back later than my bedtime each evening. But uh, thoroughly enjoying all the games. It was a, it was a blast. It was, it, uh, it's been a long time since I've been to that many games at the did College you, World Series. Did you run into any drunk-as-hell Mississippi State fans lying on the sidewalk in Omaha? I did not run into any lying on the sidewalk, but I think the better question is, did I run into any sober Mississippi State <laughs> fans? Because I'm not sure that I did. I mean... <laughs> I'll, well, good I'll, for them. Yeah, Come yeah, to Omaha, buy alcohol. Exactly. And, and you know, <laughs> they... Uh, they, they uh, really kick-started the Omaha economy, let me tell you what. Um, you know, there was a good bunch of Mississippi State fans there early in the tournament, you know. Um, and then uh, once they made the finals, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, it, they just invaded. Um, you know, and... You get the hell out of Mississippi if you could, too. Well, I think, yeah, I think that's true. And... Uh, but, you know, you looked around that stadium and there was maroon and white all over the place. Vanderbilt had their parents and maybe a few other fans sprinkled here and there. But I'll tell you what, Mississippi State, they, they took over uh, TD Ameritrade Park. And, and you know, they're, they're, they were hungry. They were thirsty. They wanted to see their team, team win a national championship. And, um, you know, and, and they did. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I was pulling for North Carolina State, actually. That's kind of the team that I picked. Um, that I was going to cheer for through the tournament. And, you know, they had some exciting moments and then, then some not so exciting moments the way it all ended up with them. But, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to latch on to Mississippi State. They play an aggressive kind of baseball. And, yeah, their fan base, they are totally, they're totally in it. Um, the only thing that could be crazier, I think, at least in terms of fans, is if Mississippi State played either LSU or Arkansas in the championship. If any combination of those three teams ever make the championship series, lock up the women and children because it will be absolute insanity in Omaha. What about Nebraska, Todd? Well, you know, that is the wild card. And absolutely, if, if Nebraska were to make it to uh, the championship series, it would be hard for anybody other than the parents of the visiting players to acquire a ticket. Uh, to, and, you know, wouldn't that be cool? you know, to leave 20,000 Arkansas fans, you know, sitting in the parking lot having to watch it on TV rather than being in the stadium. Oh, that'd be cool. I'm kind of burned out as well. Do you know why I'm kind of burned out? Well, because you're an old man. Yeah, well, there's that. Then there's this, uh, you know, people keep blowing shit up again. And you know, I got a web server. The front end's down. Looks like a problem with .NET to me. It's given a 404 error, even though... The act, the old ASP code is there. The application pool identity is set correctly. Permissions for the application pool are set correctly. It's the same code that's been running on this server now for months without any change. It's been working fine. Suddenly now it doesn't work anymore. And but I, you, can't figure out, I can't figure out what the fucking deal is. Are you is. sure it's a 404 error and not a 487 error? Because if it's a 487 error and you got a TFD sync problem, then... You, you could be way off base, John. I'm thinking I'm calling Brett Bellema tomorrow for support. <laughs> That's how serious this is. <sighs> so, so about Nebraska getting to the College World Series, did you see the news today? Yeah, Mr. Bolt, Coach Bolt, got a $100,000 raise from interim AD Garrett Classy, um, and they added a year on to the end of his contract. So, Looks like he is uh, at least contracted to be Nebraska's baseball coach through 2026. So um, good for Nebraska. That's great. So let me ask you this. We are without a leader. 
we have an interim AD, yet they were still able to execute a contract. I thought they were completely paralyzed without Bill Moose around. <laughs> <laughs> I've just insulted most of the athletic department. But, uh, you know, I just, you know, that's, that's the other guy that's in the news today. I mean, we're well, just going to rip through this stuff, right? Number well, one, I'm glad they, they – We're going to have a 15-minute podcast tonight. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'll tell you what, John, I only saw the headline. And uh, it looks like uh, they released uh, the settlement for Bill Moose. But you're going to have to – you're going to have to share the details on that because that's one thing when I was traveling today I was not able to keep up with. Well, he gets paid about $3 million. And everybody is you know, like, oh, God, why, hey, why, well, ooh, look at all the money, blah, blah. Okay. What is the athletic department? About a $150 million company, probably? Oh, somewhere there's there. some, somewhere in that ballpark, I would guess. Yeah. Okay. Would you call it the, it, what's the biggest company in Lincoln, Nebraska? Probably a bank or the University of Nebraska Athletics or the University of Nebraska. Or? Or the state of Nebraska government. Okay, so we have two public sector things, three if we count the athletic department as a, as a different entity. But you didn't mention Duncan Aviation. I don't know how many millions of dollars they're worth every year. But the, the point is this. The guy who's basically running a $150 million company, normally when you pay a guy to run a $150 million company, you pay him several million dollars a year, probably more than Bill Moose was make, making. You have a contract with him. You tell him he's going to retire early. Let's say the board of directors says, Bob, uh, you're fired. Uh, well, we'll pay you out the rest of your contract, but uh, get the hell out of here. You're done. Thanks for your service. We're going to pick somebody else. Uh, you have a contract with people. You terminate the contract. You pay out the contract. They're owed money. That's how it works. That's the, the, the whole Let's be shocked about having to buy him out and pay him off because you told him he was retiring. There's no malfeasance here. There's no indication that he did anything wrong. There's rumors flying all over the place. But none of that stuff is breach of contract type stuff where you look at Bill Moose and say, Bill, get the fuck out of here. We're not paying you anything because uh, we discovered you cooked the books because we discovered you sexually harassed people. There is literally zero of that so i don't know you know i'm old and cranky and i just the outrage after a while you're just like just get over it god pay the guy go the fuck on with your life yeah they would they wouldn't be paying you three million dollars right now if there was malfeasance and right. um you know the reality is john you're absolutely correct they had a contract they have been having regular conversation about bill moose's retirement at his monthly meeting for quite some time now I mean, you know, that's been covered in, you know, the newspapers and other, uh, other media sources. So, you know, the reality is, is that it appears to me that uh, Ronnie Green and the other powers that be wanted Bill Moose gone. And, you know, Bill Moose could very easily say, well, hey, I got a contract to be here five years. Yeah. You know, I, I want to get paid, you know, for those last 18 months. I'm not so sure that uh, I want to leave early. And, uh, you know, then the other volley that comes in is, well, what's it going to take you to leave? Um, right. We'll give you, you know, we'll give you X. Because, you know, if they had any grounds to fire Bill Moose, they would have fired Bill Moose if they right. weren't on that bad. So they had to buy him out. And, but, uh did you want to address any of the rumors or should we just not even, I, it's the same old shit, isn't it? It, it pretty much is. And, and we talked <laughs> about that in a previous podcast, some of the rumors that were flying around and you know, truth be told, it's time for Nebraska to move on. Um, you know, it is, I don't know how well it reflects upon Nebraska when you've, you know, had three ADs in what, 10 years or 12 years or something like that. Um, but there's going to, there's capable. You know what? It makes us a normal athletic department. How many ADs have Minnesota gone through in the last 10 years? I don't pay any attention. Um, exactly. And that's the thing. People only pay attention to their own family. Right. Now, right. sometimes maybe they do. Maybe they do look over there and go, 
Bob's drunk again on Texas on Christmas over there at the Hanson house. You know what I mean? Maybe people do that shit, but they only pay <laughs> attention to the world around them. So does it reflect poorly on the University of Nebraska? I don't know. It seem, makes us seem normal. The other thing is I'd say about that is this. What are where is this attitude come from that we're supposed to have people that come into a job and then stay in it for 20 years? I have nobody does that anymore. Well, that not doesn't anymore. Just, you know, the, the era of the 20 year athletic director, that's gone. Those, you know, that's, that's, that's gone. And uh, though I will tell you, it was kind of ironic when I was following my nephew. Now this isn't division one, it's division two. But when I was following my nephew, you know, to the division two world series, uh, I got to chatting up with a couple of the associate athletic directors, both of them, young guys, one of them significantly younger than me, but they were talking about the AD at central Missouri state. He's been there 40 years. Now think about that. You know, that's, that's, that just doesn't happen anymore. But truth be told, you're not going to see uh, a guy stick around. Yeah. College, or guy or a gal, you know, a lot of women are, are becoming ADs right now too. But um, you know, I, you know, John, since we're on this topic, I guess there's a couple of things I'd like to just toss out right now, you know, relative to the AD job, it was uh, reported yesterday, you know, that, um, um, Oh, Hank, Hank Bounds. Am I saying that right? Um, yeah. Okay. You know that he has no interest in the job, but also <laughs> they had some interviews with Jamie Pollard. And I think what's really interesting and, and you know, I'm, I'm an Iowa state fan and you know, I've, I've followed that uh, th those athletic programs for years. Um, however, when they Bruce Van Develde, the, the demon spawn dropped baseball a number of years ago, that's when um, we, quit financially supporting Iowa State Athletics. Um, but, uh, you know, not that we were, not that our little token donation, you know, That's whatever. $8.63, them sons of bitches don't get every year. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, you know, but um, when, when, when Jamie Pollard, you know, apparently he was pretty complimentary in his statements and, you know, he was flattered to, to be, you know, that people were mentioning his name. But then the, the thing that has, you know, got the hair standing up on the back of the necks of a lot of Nebraska fans are when he, in essence, said he thinks that the Iowa State program is in a better place right now than the Nebraska program. Now, I pay close attention to both programs, and that's a bunch of crap. Iowa State is ahead of Nebraska with their football team right, right now. They got a better yeah. football team than Nebraska. Than Nebraska. Iowa State's got a better – women's basketball team than Nebraska women's state or excuse me the only the only uh, other athletic pro or athletic team that Iowa State could be comparable to Nebraska is their their cross country and track and field and they're probably somewhat level there is no other sport there is when you look at the overall program there is no way that Iowa State University for an athletic program is anywhere close to Nebraska. Yeah, yeah their, football, their football team is very, very good right now, once in a generation, kind of like a hundred year flood. But, <laughs> you know. What is, can, can I ask you, Todd, what is the budget of the Iowa State athletic program? It is a fraction and I couldn't tell you what it is, but it is nowhere close to what Nebraska's is. Yeah, you see, and, I tweeted that Jamie Pollard probably looked at Nebraska and thought, I don't want to go be their athletic the director because I can't count that high. <laughs> it's a too big a number, and it's scary when you look at that big a number compared to this little bitty number that I have at Iowa State. The other thing is, is that Iowa State will never, ever, ever be the number one athletic program in the state of Iowa. Never, never. It will never happen. And, and now, you know what? I love Cyclones. I will love the Cyclones. Cyclone fans are great. But Iowa State is going to be the redheaded stepchild to the golden boy, Iowa, forever and ever and ever in this state. And, you know, for, for Jamie Pollard, you know what? Good for him. He's proud of the, yeah. what's happening at Iowa State. He's going to support his program. You know, he's going to take a shot, you know, when he has an opportunity to take a shot. But, you know, anyway, I just, I just thought that was pretty interesting that uh, that, that came out. So uh, I do hear some Nebraska fans 
And if Reds and Nebraska say, well, he's probably right. They pro- No, they got a better football team right now. They do not have right. a better athletic program. Right. It's just people get, again, we get so self-conscious about everything. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, it, uh, it's July 1st and something happened historically significant today. On July 1st? Yeah. Well, Bobby Bonilla apparently made one hell of a good deal with the New York Mets because he gets paid $1.16 million every July 1st on Bobby Bonilla Day. Um, <laughs> Who's Bobby Bonilla? He was a third baseman for the Pirates and then the, the Mets. I don't know the whole story, but I was listening to Sports Talk coming home, and they were all talking about Bobby Bonilla Day. Oh. So, okay, that's, that's July 1st. Yeah. Uh, what else on July 1st? <laughs> um, boy, you got me stumped there, John. Lexi Sun announced a new line of clothing of her own. That's the news. John, I didn't, have you I purchased didn't one of everything? I haven't <laughs> taken a look at it yet, but I'm going to. You know what? By God, I'll pull it up on Instagram right now. Uh, that was the news is that Lexi Sun has a new line of per, uh, clothing. And let's see. Uh, I think people are getting Brunza's restaurant, something. Uh, oh, yeah. You, you talk about when you know that what people are care about. I Yesterday, I interviewed the CEO of Boost Mobile. Okay? The CEO that runs Boost Mobile. Do you know how much Boost Mobile is worth? Uh, millions and millions and millions and millions. <laughs> and millions more. Yes, and you could take the M and replace it with B. Billions. Yes, and and I interviewed their CEO about this. Today they announced that they were sponsoring the Cavender Twins from Fresno State. The Cavender Twins? Are you kidding me? They got them? Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. Who the hell are they? (laughs) <laughs> they have millions of followers they have a youtube channel they have tiktok instagram they have millions of followers across social media they are two girls that are twins five foot six guards that were told they were never play in division one because they were undersized fresno state won their conferences last year i talked to the ceo that thing on youtube got about 45 views today in other words almost nothing compared to you know, when I did my instant reaction thing to Bill Moose being retired, fired, it, it had over 2,000 views. So either people don't give a shit about the CEO of Boost Mobile, and then I'll give a damn about Neil, or I'm a crappy marketer. But here's, here's some things that he said that were very important. Uh, number one, I asked, him, I asked him about how do you handle college athletes differently? And he said, I, compared to Pitbull, Pitbull was one of their spokespeople, right? His answer was, well, we could get about 10,000, probably 10,000 college athletes for one pit bull and make a much bigger difference in, basically in their lives than it would even mean to pit bull. So I, that was important to him. I mean, he talked a mile a minute. You could tell he was very, well, he was a busy guy. They had shit tons going on and he took 20 minutes with me to let me interview him. So I appreciated that. But I did get the inside, you know, the inside track of a CEO that runs a multi-billion dollar company, the fourth largest wireless carrier in the United States now. And he basically said, you know, the thing about Neil all this time is people have been going, well, what what, Nike's just going to buy everything for Oregon. Okay, Nike isn't even going to probably do anything with this shit. Companies like AT&T, Verizon, IBM, they're not going to get involved in this. You know who's going to get involved? The local bakery in your town is going to get involved with this. The firecracker stand in Beatrice, Nebraska. Exactly. Right. Who was it? Cam Jurgens is selling half price fireworks. Right? You know, this, this is just incredible because this is, you know, what's running through my mind is those commercials you used to see where you can get, you know, Earl Shy. Earl Shad, get your car painted for $99.95. And Jeff Byers, our buddy from college, I remember when he took his car down to Earl Shad in Lincoln, Nebraska, and he ran out of gas, so we had to push it the last block and a half just to get it there so he could get it painted. 
And they painted it some god-awful flat gray. It was pathetic. But it was $99.95 to get your Earl shot. $99.95. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Schweibach's Jerospeed. We're yeah, going to exactly. be Joe Schweibach's Jerospeed. Oh, my goodness gracious. We're turning these college athletes in to hucksters. They're shilling for whatever, you know, you know. They're just else. trying to figure it out. This is what happens when you let. You're you right. Know, You're they're, right. They're, they're, they'll figure it out. I mean, they'll Cam get it all Jer figured out. If Cam Jurgens released a line of clothing. I'd be going, OK, what the hell? None of this shit fits me because it's for really huge guys that play center. <laughs> well, I, I did. Uh, I did one talk radio. They were going on about some of it. And it sounds like there's a lot of athletes that are on cameo. I've only recent recently heard of what cameo is, but that's something that makes some sense. I can, yeah. I can see where, you know, that would be something that's kind of cool and where kids, you know, college athletes could, could certainly uh, benefit from that. And um, you know, it is many people have said it. It's not my term. It's going to be the wild west. It's going to be nuts for a while, but eventually it's, it's going to, um, there'll, there'll be kind of a groove and then people respond um, to, to what it's, you know, a year from now, we'll, we'll certainly know a lot more about what's going on than we do right now. But I think it's exciting because it gives chances for smaller businesses to make a hit in their, their local area for not much money. I mean, like I mentioned, the local bakery is going to sponsor uh, your favorite women's basketball player, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I don't get that why there was a big deal about this in the first place. It's because, you know, like some guy tweeted at me yesterday, I think it was, well, what happens when some super rich alum just decides to pay a kid for blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, people that are super rich don't get super rich by making shitty investments. Okay. Well, yeah. And, you're not, and, you're not just going to throw $50,000 at an 18 year old kid and say, go, go hawk my, my paint jobs for my cars. You know what I mean? Well, it's going to, there, there's going to be oversight on this and you know, these kids are eventually, you know, they're going to get their, they're going to have to pay taxes on this income. There's going to have to be, um, you know, there's going to have to be money trails now that it's out on the open. And, and you know what this does? It's kind of like the, you know, the legalization of marijuana or the legalization of other things like that. It takes it from, you know, the, you know, under the table to out on top of the table. So people have some idea of what's actually going on. And, um, you know, it's going to make it difficult for the bag men, um, you know, to, to influence uh, some of the athletes, but, um, you, you know, I, I do, the, I agree with you. The McGowan brothers announced their own podcast sponsored by, I think a tavern or something. Sure. Now there were guidelines issued by the universities and there's been a lot of other guidelines issued by universities that you cannot like promote. Obviously you can't sign a contract with somebody that conflicts with a school contract. Uh, you can't promote like, you know, alcohol, drugs, gambling, adult entertainment and that kind of stuff, entertainment, yeah. which, you know, yeah. stuff that would go against the, the, the holy sacred nature of amateur athletics, which which always brings me back to several months ago when that kid was uh, I think he was a quarterback for UNLV was forced at gunpoint to apologize for like eating oysters off a nude model in the, on a yacht in the Mediterranean. Wait, what the he, hell? Did he get paid for that now? I I hope, yeah, he, I would hope he got he would get paid shit tons for that now. <laughs> it's funny to me that we we worry about this kind of stuff, but the politicians we keep electing are the deepest bunch of dung heap shitheads on either side of the aisle than well, any of these kids are ever going to be. Mostly, you know the the thing the thing that I look at too, and and you know I could go on it. <laughs> Uh, an incredible rant and jump all over the soapbox on this. But, you know, you have colleges and universities, as well as a lot of head coaches that are making obscene amounts of money off of the, I'm not going to use the term labor. I'm going to use the term effort. They're making all of this money off of the efforts the voluntary effort given by 18 to 22 year olds. And um, 
you know, when, when you look at football coaches, college football coaches that have five, $6 million contracts and you have still have athletes who are on scholarship that can't afford a plane ticket to go home and see their family. Yeah. That's absolutely wrong. That is wrong. And, you know, I know that the, the old school folks say, well, they got a college scholarship. You know what? They do have a college scholarship, but athletics takes so much more time uh, from them than their academics do. And um, most of them don't take a full load of courses. Very few of them are going to get done in four years if they wanted to. Um, you know, it, it, being a, a division one college athlete is a full-time job and their, their part-time job, their second job, their second part-time job is being a college student. So if, if they can't make a little income, because as it was right now, John, if you were a scholarship athlete, you know, before this NIL stuff, if you were a college athlete and you wanted to put a little money in your pocket and, you know, work in the off season, work 10 hours a week at Jimmy John's, you couldn't do that. You, right. you, you could not subsidize any other, any other student on campus could work that part-time job, but a division one athlete can. So good for them. Um, that's, I that's why I had to, that's how I, why I had to stop being an escort when I was in college because of my scholarship. I didn't want to lose it. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I, I'm surprised that that wasn't overturned for as many of the women that came to your defense when you had to give up being an escort. Um, I tell you what, I thought they were going to influence, uh, you know, the, the engineering department that, uh, uh, awarded you your scholarship. I figured the Dean of Engineering would probably collapse and uh, give in and let you uh, continue your <clears throat> escorting services. Just because of the sheer charisma of my soul. <laughs> I don't know that the women were really interested in your charisma, John. I think there was something else. <laughs> oh my God. This just turned, this just went dark. No, it went, oh, whatever. No, oh, what else do we have? We're at 30 minutes. Well, you know, I guess just to kind of summarize the name, image, and likeness, you know, um, I, I think something that is really cool is how the University of Nebraska embraced it. I mean, they were so far out in front of this, and, you know, they, uh, they were working on this a year ago, and even more. You know, they saw it coming, and they were going to have a well-thought-out structure uh, of support in place, you know, for athletes at the University of Nebraska. You know, over here in Iowa, it was kind of like 10 days ago, they go, oh, hell, the NCAA is really going to do this? Well, we're going to have to have something in place. Jeez Louise, this is really going to happen. And hey, you know, that's, that's who we could get for our new AD. Is, uh, what's that guy's name? Gary Barta? Gary Barta. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Say goodbye to women's sports. <laughs> uh, and, that and hello lawsuit hello discrimination lawsuit yeah and iowa fans would be happy for us to take them off their hands uh, most of them would iowa with fans would also be happy if we you know take crybaby fran um they they, they probably wouldn't mind that you know here's something that was kind of interesting too you know i heard somebody talking about with name image and likeness they were saying well do you suppose there'll ever be a you know, some of these student athletes that because of their outside income, you know, that will be so great that uh, they'll make so much money that they won't need their scholarship and they would, you know, open their scholarship to be given to another um, student athlete. And the one, the other guy on the talk show said, oh, hell no. He said, just look at the University of Iowa, Kirk Ferentz and Fran McCaffrey, all of their kids took the scholarships. Yeah. They didn't pay for their own kids. Yeah you know, to, to play at the university yeah. of Iowa. So, you know, it's a cute, you know, it, it's a cute idea, but like I said earlier, people don't get super rich by making bad investments and right. You know, and if somebody's going to give you a 300,000, $400,000 college paid for free, you, you take it because you're not an idiot. Right. Right. So, but yeah, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to give people something to talk about for the next three or four days. And then, 
you know, something new is going to come around and that's going to grab the headlines. And then before you know it, it will be time for uh, at least the Nebraska team to report to camp because they get to play a week zero game. So they get to start uh, camp a little bit earlier and, and uh, that'll be fun. Big 10 media days is three weeks away, I think. Three weeks away. Yeah. And uh, is that uh, when the uh, 10K, 5K uh Show, show, show yeah, that you're in right. better shape is going to yeah. happen. Yeah, I'm going to have, you know, I've, I've walked the last few days and I've had a, a, a little bit of a dizzy spell. <laughs> well, I'm, I've been pushing myself on my walking a little harder. I, I've actually started work just a smidge of jogging into my routine. Um, a smidge, a smidge, a smidge, a smidge. But uh, yeah, you know, John, I don't know how many people from Corn Nation participated last year, maybe a handful of uh, the writers and whatnot uh, participated in it. And it, I think there's going to be a, a few, maybe, maybe a few more this year that have signed up to do it. And, maybe we'll have a mobile Zoom call or something. That would be you fun. All, you can all see me collapse. <laughs> I, I, there's, there is a, my walking path includes the, a large hill. And the other day I walked four miles and did went up that hill at the end of it. And my heart rate got up to 191. And I posted that in one That's of my heart problematic. Groups. <laughs> I posted that one of my heart groups and people that shit themselves. They're like, oh my God, what are you doing, man? I'm like, well, I didn't, you know, I, I felt a little wobbly, but I didn't fall over. So. No, oh, shoot. Kind of yeah, like those yeah. little toys years ago. What are they? Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Don't fall down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're bringing out all the past cartoons and uh, commercials and I'll paint any car for 99, nine to five. <laughs> Earl Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else? Do we have anything else? Boy, I really don't. Uh, Did you see Twitter at all? Have you seen Twitter at all? I've just kind of glanced around a little bit at Twitter today. Not a whole lot. So Okay. So. Spencer Rattler. The Oklahoma quarterback uh, put out a tweet with a new logo for Spencer Rattler. And that's oh, kind of cool. And I should yeah. include it in the show notes. Uh, but he said he was going to donate all his proceeds to whatever goodness he could do because he felt that we should all do good. And it's kind of like, fuck you, you guy that's going to get drafted in the NFL ass wipe. And then they, he had this nice graphic and everything. And then he has a photo a him, whoever picked this photo, he is the looks like the dumbest shit photo ever. I, I have why you pick a photo that makes you look like an absolute moron. You I know, get it. Yeah. You're wearing a headband. You're an athlete, but the the I don't. It's not a kissy duck face that girls do, but it's a. I don't know. It was terrible. We'll put it in the show notes. I and think then, you, need, uh, you need to put Cam Wins new logo. Yes. That's what I was going to bring up. His logo was clearly done by advanced experts in the field of uh, design. And oh, I, I tell you what, those probably were like Madison Avenue graphic <laughs> artists that put that one together. To me, there's a little bit of an anarchy look to Cam. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, but I, yeah, you know, it's, it's, and what's so cool about him. I mean, he got his whole name in there. I mean, it wasn't just as yeah. it. Wow. It kind of looks a little Pac-Man-ish with the, with the winning W. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is going to be a lot of fun. It'll be, it'll be pretty interesting. You know, I guess there is one other thing that I wonder. You know, so is this going to – how is this going to trickle down to student athletes before they get to college? Well, one of the rules is, is you can't – you can't make, you know, the NCAA is still going to sit there and you still can ruin your eligibility by taking money, especially if it's for placement at a school. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where that line is. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that will take advantage of younger kids and parents that are dumb. I think, I think the idea behind that is you've already, I mean, Nate McHugh did that article about observations of a father at a football camp, right? Right. And he talked right. about the one guy that stuck those kids in to mm -hmm. cut in line constantly to get receiving yeah. balls. I've bumped into okay. people like that. Yep. That 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 fucking guy is going to be the guy that goes out and convinces parents to ruin kids' eligibility before they're even in college 
by trying to get him to hawk shit. Well, and I'm he's, an, he's an asshole. I'm going to be interested to see if and when that happens and, and what that's going to look like. Because, you know, what's, what's to happen, you know, to Medicine Valley High School's uh, point guard from, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing a spot for, you know, the used car dealer in Curtis, Nebraska. And, you know, so uh, I don't know. Uh, nobody talks about it outside of uh, colleges and universities. I'm just really curious because, you know, as well as I do, there are so many con men out there that have the ears of these parents of these 15 and 16 year old hot shots. Um, I don't know. It, it will be, we are, we are in interesting times, John. We are. I, I, oh, Lexi's son has her own t-shirt logo. I mean, we're going to be done now so I can go look at her clothing line. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join us next week when John will be wearing a Lexi Sun original. Yeah. I mean, why not? My God. The woman's an Amazon and she's an incredible athlete. She's a joy to watch, especially in a Husker uniform. If she was wearing like a, I don't know, a Texas uniform like she was years ago, then we'd be a different story. But she's yeah. a Nebraska alum and a Nebraska and a Husker. So by God, I'm I'm gonna go look at her clothing line or whatever she's selling. I don't care. Well, could John be could be <laughs> let's okay, let's say goodbye. John, we're gonna say goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Todd Wolverton. This has been the Five Heart Podcast, where five hearts are all the hearts you need. John, go big red. And look at Lexi Sun's new merchandise line. <laughs>